for our scripture person this morning. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Habakkuk. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 1 to 19. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, on Shigeonath, the Lord I have, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day, in our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Timan, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens, his praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flashed from his hands where his power was hidden. Plague went before him. Pestilence followed his steps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The ancient mountains crumbled. The age-old hills collapsed. But he marches on forever. I saw the tents of Kushan in distress the dwellings of Midian in anguish. Were you angry with the rivers, Lord? Was your wrath against the streams? Did you rage against the sea when you rode your horses and your chariots to victory? You uncovered your bow. You called for many arrows. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. Torrents of water swept by, the deep roared and lifted its waves on high. Sun and moon stood still in the heavens at the glint of your flying arrows, at the lightning of your flashing spear. In wrath you strode through the earth, and in anger you threshed the nations. You came out to deliver your people, to save your anointed one. You crushed the leader of the land of wickedness. You stripped him from head to foot. With his own spear, you pierced his head when his warriors stormed out to scatter us, gloating as though about to devour the wretched who were in hiding. You trampled the sea with your horses, churning the great waters. I heard and my heart pounded, my lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come upon the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there is no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. For the director of music on my stringed instruments. Here ends the scripture lesson. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading, understanding, and keeping of his word. Shall we look to God in prayer? Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, this morning once again we come to you to ask you that you will speak to us, Lord. We pray that you will open our eyes to see the wonderful things in your word. And Lord, as we ponder upon your word, Lord, help us to apply it to our lives. Thank you, Father, for having heard our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This month we are looking at the attitude of thankfulness. Why should we be thankful? And during this time, I just want to, this morning, focus on being thankful in times of distress and darkness, thankful 
in dark times and so at this time we look at it for a few moments we look at the passage that was read to us paul writing to the thessalonian church in the first book of Thessalon thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 17 and 18 gives us some a kind of command he says rejoice always pray without ceasing give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of god in christ jesus for you this is what god expects of us life today is very complicated our circumstances as we look around are very bleak we hear of all kinds of news there is unrest in most parts of the world and this morning as we are seated listening to god's word perhaps you don't feel like praising god perhaps you don't feel very thankful we think of the natural calamities that are taking place all across the world and as we look at the news as we watch what happened in afghanistan it seems so far away and yet there is something about it which tells us that we are it is not all good our own personal lives perhaps have been a set of problems problems regarding our relationships problems regarding our finances some of us may have lost our jobs worries about our children sickness and all these things seem to be pulling pulling us down it's a very bleak scene in the midst of all this is it possible to thank god and be thankful can we have a thankful attitude i believe it is possible as we look at the at the passage that we looked at together let us take some clues from habakkuk very little is known about habakkuk uh, the the looking at the book reading reading the whole chap the whole book it seems that he came from a priestly family perhaps he was a musician he was perhaps the chief uh, chief singer or whatever it is and it is usually this is the this was the this was the function of the priest in those days they had the they had the they had the calling to provide music in the temple so perhaps habakkuk was a priest who was to who was, to, was also a musician he seems to be also a person who is very poet or person of poetical bent of mind and as we look at this particular thing we realize that he was also a prophet by calling the word habakkuk means embracer in the book of habakkuk we see a, a close relationship that habakkuk has with god habakkuk embraced the lord and in turn he was embraced by the lord there seems to be a kind of wonderful relationship uh, some uh, some people say it's a soliloquy but of, to me it looks like a dialogue between him and god his prayer reveals what he was going through in his mind there was injustice in the land there was loss of trust among people the scene was bleak and earlier on habakkuk was also aware of the sins of israel uh, judah and he also knew that there was a punishment coming the condition of israel was bad and the prophet habakkuk was really sad because of the condition the question in his mind was when will all these things be set right he had many many such questions was uh, was you know 6 verse chapter 1 verse 6 god answers the question that habakkuk raised in verse 4 when will you punish the unjust and god tells him i'm going to punish the unjust and i'm going to use the babylonians to come and punish those who are exploiting your own people and then habakkuk cries out to god and said lord but why the babylonians don't you realize they are such a cruel nation 
You see that in chapter 1, verse 1 to 11, 7 to 11. And God says, even though they are, they are my instruments, they, they themselves will be under my judgment. Arrogance will have its own reward. He says, wait and see. And so we see that Habakkuk, there is a, well, we see Habakkuk's secret of coping with the situation and being thankful in this little prayer. Ralph Waldo Emerson says this, sorrow looks back, worry looks around, and faith looks up. And so as we look at this passage, I want us to quickly look at two sections. One, chapter 3, verse 1 to 16, let your gaze be on God. And chapters, chapter 3, verse 16 to 19, let your confidence be God. So let's look at the first section. Let your gaze be on God. Chapter 3, verse 1 to 16. Let your gaze be on the greatness of God. God's revelation of himself demonstrates and shows how great he is. God's deeds reveal how great he is. Let your gaze be on the greatness of God and your glance be on the problems that surround us. And that will set you free to be a thankful person. Very quickly, Habakkuk's as Habakkuk looks at the circumstances, he focuses eyes upon someone else. He focuses eyes upon God. He sees that his God is a God of grace and awesome power. How does that happen? There is no better antidote to fear and sorrow than a vision of God. And God gives him that vision. And very poetically, Habakkuk describes that. He has a vision of God. In God, in his grace and mercy, gives Habakkuk a vision of himself. Often we see this in the scriptures, that God takes the initiative to show himself to his people, especially when his people are down and out. Habakkuk sees the glory of God Covering the heavens, verse 3. God came from Timon, the Holy One from the Mount Paranj. His splendor covers the heavens and the earth was full of praise. His brightness was like the sun, was like the light. Rays flashed from his hands and there he veiled his power. Habakkuk seems to have an awesome perspective of God. Yahweh, in the midst of all the calamities, he looks to God and he has a very huge understanding of God. In the midst of the approaching enemy Babylon, who are about to kill him, even kill the nation, even though they were God's instrument, his eyes were focused on Yahweh, the God who loves them. You see the same thing in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah was in chapter 6, we see that when Isaiah was depressed, when the nation was going through a very bad time, there was a national loss and instability in the nation. God gives a vision to Isaiah as he is in the temple. He saw the glory of God. And even though there was a national calamity in the loss of their king, God revealed himself to Isaiah and that changed Isaiah's total perspective. He focused his eyes upon a God who is sovereign, who is able to do wonderful things. Daniel is another person. The visions, to sh God gave visions to Daniel to show, demonstrate that he is Lord even in a foreign land. Even when you are under under subjugation, even when you are a captive, I am still God. I am the sovereign one. Ezekiel was another good example. Ezekiel was a prophet in exile. And there in exile, when it seems like this, this captivity would go on and on and on, 
God gives Ezekiel a vision to show him that the day will come, they will return. Our God is an awesome God. Oftentimes our focus is so much on ourselves and the surroundings that we forget that we worship a God who is awesome. You and I can be thankful as we take our eyes from our surroundings and look at God. The second, second section of this is seen in the fact we, Habakkuk recounts the wonderful acts of God. Again, it's a very poetical form. Habakkuk recounts the creative God, work of God in nature. It shows how very poetically he describes it. He remembers the greatness of God. He reflects his action that he is a God who is a creator. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 9, You strip the sheath from your bow, calling many arrows. You split the earth with rivers. In other words, talking about the creative power of God. He speaks of God, power, God's power. Actions in history. He talks about the God's power over nature. Again, referring to the time when the sun stood still, the moon stood still, when in the history of Israel, we read about it in Joshua chapter 10 verse 12 following. At that time, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel. And he said in the sights of Israel, Sun stand still at Gibeon and moon in the valley of Ajalon. In other words, the God of the Bible we worship has got power to stop the daily routine of the sun and the moon and nothing can withstand God's power. This is Acts in history. He also re re recounts the wonderful way in which God picks up the nation of Israel. Egypt, one of the most powerful nations of that time. God takes the slave, slaves from there, rescues them. And keeping in keeping with the promise that he made to Abraham, he took them out with a mighty arm. Israel never, never forgot that. Even today. Israel still remembers the mighty act of God. Remembers how, even though, how God brought the people of Israel through very difficult times. Chapter, chapter 3 verse 12 to 14 talks about it. Then God gave them victory over more powerful nations. God saved Israel from the powerful nations who were inhabiting the land. The land that he had promised, how he moved them out. And Israel was given that land. God sent, God intervened in the history of Israel by sending his prophets. When they sinned, they warned them. Therefore, God will now act against Babylon, those he will, though he will send, though he will use them to punish us. God will come and act inevitably in judgment. And then he says how even though the people of Israel sinned and that he is going to punish them with Babylon, Babylon themselves will be punished. You know, Habakkuk had this deep relationship with God and in his conversation with God, all these things are revealed. And Habakkuk pictures the final punishment of the one, the instrument of God, who God would use to punish Israel, the final punishment for them, he pictures it like a gathering storm that is coming and he is waiting for it. Habakkuk also knew, remember, that God has his own timetable. It appears he had left Israel. It seems that God has left Israel. But he has his own timetable and he will come when the time is just right. The New Testament also gives us the picture that God has his own timetable. So often we are so worried about why things are happening the way they are happening. And for us it is good to know that the acts of God in history in the past remind us that there is a timetable that God has got. And that gives us confidence to be thankful because we have a God who will act even though he may not act 
according to the time that we set. Look at the God we worship. How do I, how do I cope with the circumstances that are around me? How do I, how am I to be thankful in the midst of all this? I want to just give you a few suggestions. Spend time in worshipping God. Get into the God's word. Read his word. See who he is. Talk among each other. Talk about the greatness of God. There's so much of negative talk going around as to how everything is going against us. Think about the God we worship. Talk positive things. Read the book of Psalms. Remember the mighty acts of God in your own personal lives. I am sure each one of us as we sitting and listening that God you have, you can, you can remember the times that God in a wonderful way has acted in your life. Think about that. Don't get carried away by the circumstances. Remember that circumstances are temporary. They are not eternal. But God is eternal. His works will continue. They are forever. The second section that we want to look at is, let your confidence be in God. Chapter, chapter 3, verse 16 to 19. While we hear about God's, Habakkuk's fear, at the same time, Habakkuk seems to be a man of confidence. The ground of confidence of Habakkuk is in God, and that's a paradox. He says, it says, yet I will wait patiently for the day of the Lord, the day when calamity will fall on the people who are troubling us. Verse 17. Even though the fig tree should not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail and the fields yield no food, the flocks be cut off and the fold from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls. Even though there is a failure of crops, even though there is agricultural failure, though there is economic failure, those days per people's per personal wealth and prosperity was marked by animals. And by the number of cattle or camels or sheep or goats a person had, though all these basic necessities will not be there, Yet, he says, I will rejoice. My problems may be mountain high. Yet, I will rejoice and be thankful. My sickness may be slowing me down. Yet, I will rejoice and be thankful. There may be just injustice being done against me. Yet, I will, be, I will rejoice and be thankful. He almost uses the term as though he's, he's enjoying it. When, you know, the, the Bible scholars tell us, that the, the, the expressions are such that when, an, when you exult over an enemy who is defeated, he's looking at his circumstances, he's enjoying it, and he says, I exult as though it is all going to be gone. It is finished. How can I rejoice like this? Verse 18, because I have a relationship with this awesome God. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord and I will take joy in the God, my Savior. Yet I rejoice in the Lord. The word Lord used there is the term that is used for the Israel's covenanting God, Yahweh. My covenanting God. And the people of Israel, whenever they use the word Yahweh, it was something very personal. He was my God. He was not somebody else's God. He is my God because He has made a covenant to me and I have a relationship. Some versions very clearly say, He is a God, my Savior. When you and I have a relationship with this self-existent, eternal Yahweh, then you and I can depend on, we need not depend upon our circumstances. This self-existent God, Yahweh, has his got his own timings. Therefore, I will not look at my circumstances, but at him who holds my future, on him 
who holds my circumstances together. My confidence is not in my circumstances. My confidence is not in my ability to cope. My confidence is in my God who is my Savior. Notice the personal relationship. When you and I have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ, you and I will have the confidence that others may not have. John chapter 1, verse 12. Jesus very clearly speaks about it. How you and I as God's children, today we are the new Israel, God's children. He says, but to all who receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Paul writing to the Roman Christians in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, he said, for all those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. For in verse 15 he says, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we call Abba Father. What a privilege that he has given to us. And so my dear friends, as you are listening, as you look at your circumstance, may I ask you, this time when we feel most unthankful, it seems most depressing all around, May I point you to the one who gave his life on the cross? May I point you to the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. May I point you to the one who said, I have your future covered. Everything is in my hands. What a privilege you and I have. And that is the reason why we can rejoice. We can rejoice and be thankful in our sonship. We can rejoice and be thankful in our relationship with God because I am a child of the King of Kings and that not only gives me identity but also gives me a security. Much of the time when we are not, we don't feel thankful is because we are insecure. Much of the time when we look all depressed and we are confused is because we don't have a sense of identity of who we are. We are God's children, this child, children of the King of Kings. Verse 19, another aspect of it is that God takes the initiative. Yes, He is my God, I have a relationship, but He takes the initiative to step out and control. Look at that once again. Verse 19, God, the Lord, is my strength. God, the word used there in Hebrew is Adonai. The Lord, the word used there, a Lord can be translated as Yahweh. The sovereign Yahweh, that means a sovereign person, that means he's a controller of everything there is. The Lord, the master, the owner of everything he gives me strength. As I go through my circumstances, He gives me strength. He gives me natural strength, He gives me moral strength, and He gives me spiritual strength. In verse 19, the second part, He says, And He makes my feet like the deer's, and He makes me tread on high places. It is God who helps me, not my own strength. And He enables me. He, I, when I let the supernatural come into the natural, I allowed the covenanting God to help me to tread on high places. He raises me up. He helps me and He guides me. No wonder Paul and Silas in the prison in Philippi in Acts chapter 15, in the midst of the imprisonment, they were able to worship God. In the midst of the hopeless situation, they worshiped God and God intervened. He makes my feet like the deer's. He gives me a deer's feet, giving us a picture of firmness. And this passage seems to be taken out of Psalm 18 verse 33 and 33. Uh, again, the picture of God who makes us strong, our feet to be sure, 
when the, as we run, as we climb the mountains, as the, even though the path may be treacherous, he is the one who gives me feet of a deer. Let me, he made my feet like the feet of a deer, set me on secure heights. It's not only an allusion to the swiftness of the deer, but also the strength and the firmness of feet. I got everything to be thankful for because this God who is seated on the throne, he's my savior, but he also comes in and empowers me. The power of God now is available to us. The third person in the Godhead, though invisible, yet powerful enough to be living in us is actually enabling us and empowering us to tread these difficult places. If I were to ask you, would you recount such incidents? I'm sure many of you, many of you are still listening, will say, yes, there were times when it seemed impossible. Somehow, when I cried out to God, there was a supernatural power that came and helped me through. I can bear witness to many, many times when God has done that. You know why? In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, Paul reminds us, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit in, within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. Yes, that's one side. The other side is that this supernatural person enables me. The divine enabler is available to me in moments when I find it difficult. And therefore, I will thank him. The Holy Spirit's limitless capacities are resident within you and he indwells you. And therefore, you and I can be thankful. In the midst of hopelessness, I can face with confidence and thankfulness because I have a God who's awesome. I have a God who's sovereign. I have a God who's the creator of this universe. I don't need to be frightened with all that is happening around me. I am limited, but he is limitless. I am finite, but he is infinite. I am weak but he is strong. And I see the deeds of God and gain confidence that God is able to carry me through. I have confidence because I have a covenant relationship with God. I am secure in all circumstances because God takes the initiative to help me. I have peace and in adverse circumstances because I know that God is in control. He will even use a Babylonian to fulfill his purposes in my life. And I will give thanks, no matter what happens, not because of my circumstances, but in spite of my circumstances, because of God, because of the God whom I worship, I will give thanks in all circumstances. I can be thankful in spite of my trouble and my pain, because I march to a different drumbeat I am not overpowered by my circumstances. It is said in the frigid waters around Greenland, there are countless icebergs. Some are small, some are gigantic. And, he's, and they say that if you observe them carefully, you will notice some things, that the smaller ice flows will move in one direction, whereas the huge ones will move in another direction. And they say the explanation is very simple. The surface winds drive the small ones, whereas the huge masses of ice are carried along by the deep ocean currents. When we face trials, tragedies, it is helpful for us to see our lives are being subjected to two forces, the surface winds and the ocean currents. The winds represent everything that is changeable and unpredictable and distressing. But operating simultaneously with these winds, the surface winds, 
there are there is another movement much more powerful and this is the movement of the ocean currents and if you compare it with the god who is under taking us from underneath and carrying us along you and i know the sovereign purposes of god the deep flow of his unchanging love will carry us through whatever storms that we face trust him in these challenging and changing times and be thankful william arthur ward said this gratitude can transform common days into thanksgivings turn routine jobs into joy and change ordinary opportunities into blessings how true it is because we have a god who is awesome and we have a god who is personal and he can change any situation he gives me strength to tread on high places difficult places treacherous places he will see and he will carry us through let's look to god in prayer father we thank you for who you are Oh so many times we look at our circumstances lord we look at all that is happening around us and happening to us and we get so disappointed and discouraged and we fail to be thankful master for who you are this morning we want to thank you for reminding us once again that you are an awesome god continue to reveal yourself to us lord in the midst of the clamor of the world and the around us reveal yourself to us in the pages of your word and when we are on our knees as we rise up and sing praises to you reveal yourself to us lord lord take us out help us to see everything in from your perspective father that we may know that you are god and none can change that and that you love us with an everlasting love so master we pray that you will be help us to be thankful thankful in all circumstances and we pray lord that in being so that we may become agents of transformation in the places you have placed us in jesus name we pray amen